Hello, everybody. This is Chris Day, the co-founder of the Global Cannabis Network Collective, and your host today for the International Cannabis Conversation. Uh, we've had a great couple of episodes over the last few weeks. Uh, the most recent one, we got a chance to talk to folks in Mexico about the very large and emerging medicinal cannabis market there. Um, we spent some time in India talking to folks there about the Ayurvedic medicine practice um, in India and the 1.4 billion people who are benefiting from uh, the, the, canna the cannabis and hemp market there. And today we've got a little bit different um, location, much smaller country, but very influential in the European cannabis market. Uh, we're visiting Malta, so um, an island nation, part of the EU, south of Italy uh, and north of Tripoli, Libya, uh, sits in the Mediterranean. And um, at the end of 2019, I had the opportunity to visit Malta for a conference called the MedCan World Forum, uh, where I got a chance to talk about the value of international partnerships in helping to expand the global cannabis marketplace. It was my first time to actually physically visit. It was great. And um, what's interesting about Malta is really sort of the wholehearted efforts being put both by the private sector and the government to recruit and attract uh, cannabis businesses there. And it's my pleasure today to be able to welcome Marion Zamit of Malta Enterprise. Um, and Marion has, she's a life science graduate with a MBA from the University of Malta. Uh, she is a medical cannabis policy and technical expert with multidisciplinary expertise in pharmaceutical manufacturing, regulatory sales and marketing, uh, and 10 years experience in advanced uh, manufacturing, having worked in both the semiconductor and pharma sectors. So Marion, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're separated by about eight hours, but we're here together online, and I really appreciate you taking out the time. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for inviting me over for this chat. Of course. I'm looking forward to uh, the opportunity, hopefully at the end of this year, beginning of next, to uh, see you in person again and visit Malta. I, I really enjoyed my time there. The history and sort of pivotal location um, that Malta has uh, has made a, a big difference, really, when you study the country. Um, and it seems like you're, you're making great efforts to have a pivotal role in the European cannabis market as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do and also what Malta Enterprise is doing? Sure. Um, Malta Enterprise is the Maltese government's agency responsible for economic development and growth. And as such, we have a dual purpose in this landscape, namely the First role is that of attracting foreign direct uh, investment into Malta through identifying new niches and growing new sectors, such as the cannabis industry. And our other role is that of supporting existing industry. So supporting industry throughout the whole process from inception, from establishing their activities here in Malta, all the way through their growth cycle and uh, part in, on our island. That's great. It is really nice to see sort of these public-private partnerships around the world to help um, both economic investment, which has obvious benefits to the country, but also, you know, certainly helps provide great benefit for industry as well. Um, for those who may not be as familiar with sort of the cannabis regulations in history in Malta, um, how long has there been a legalized program there? Sure. So uh, making cannabis accessible to patients has been uh, legislated for, for quite a while. Back in November 2017, uh, the legislation was adapted to make it even more accessible. So it gave, um, it enabled all healthcare professionals 
to be able to prescribe medical cannabis to patients. That is no longer a specialist prescription is being required, but even a family doctor can actually prescribe medical cannabis to a patient, provided that they have a special permit from the public health department. Once we have, once we had taken the steps to enable that, we decided that we wanted to open up the opportunity for operators to come and produce medical and manufacture medical cannabis in Malta. This came by from a history of pharma manufacturing. So in Malta, we have a very well established and robust cluster of pharmaceutical um, uh, pharmaceutical operators producing mostly solid oral dose. So once we had the skills and the expertise in producing pharmaceutical products and uh, cannabis had become, um, uh, uh, was starting to be allowed to be used for patients, we decided to open up for the manufacturing as well as research. And that was enacted back in April 2018. Okay, so and how has that gone for you? I mean, there's a number of um, companies now operating there, a number of licenses. Um, how how is the the market growing relative to, I guess, what your expectations or hopes were? Obviously, so so far we have a number of uh, operators that have been issued with a letter of intent. The letter of intent, so to speak, is the first step towards anyone establishing activities here in Malta. And the letter of intent is issued by Malta Enterprise. So we are the primary gateway issuing the green light, so to speak, in order for anyone to set up activities. Following that, um, an operator will start finding its way how to set up these activities. And ultimately, a license is issued by the Malta Medicines Authority, which is the regulator of the industry. At the moment, um, we have quite a number of companies that have actually applied for the license, some of whom are at quite an advanced stage towards uh, being issued the license. And we have actually the first license, which was issued back in December 2020, just before the year end, and that was awarded to Afria. All right. Well, congrats to Afria. So it's always good to uh, be first and be in, you know, through the through the gauntlet of approvals um, that are required. And I think one of, at least I speculate, you know, as I look at not only producers, but ancillary companies and others who are wanting to engage within Malta, certainly, but it's a relatively small population compared to a lot of the other countries throughout Europe. Um, but it seems like a, a good operational hub location, um, right? Because I think there's a number of other sort of benefits to, to being located there. Um, is that accurate? It's very accurate indeed. Um, there are some very obvious advantages. First and foremost, Malta is a new member state, and as such, we have a medicines authority, which is amongst the most highly reputed by the European Medicines Agency. And therefore, that means that a new GMP license awarded by the Malta Medicines Authority is a license which is acknowledged by the European Medicines Agency and therefore that leads to harmonization of standards. Um, apart from that, obviously the legislation is very enabling. We have tried to make it as enabling as possible, obviously without compromising quality standards. Um, and then there are other obvious advantages, like the proximity to the European market, like the fact that all business is conducted in English, uh, like the fact that Malta Enterprise is a supportive partner throughout the growth cycle of any company. Um, you can speak to the operators themselves and they will clearly identify what have been the advantages um, of setting up their operations in Malta so far. Cool. Yeah, you know, um, one thing, I want to pivot off of cannabis for just a second and talk about Malta itself, um, because I, when I visited... Um, and I visited a lot of countries in my, in my <laughs> lifetime and been to a lot of places. Um, you know, it was kind of a unique experience, one that I um, 
it, it wasn't unexpected. I just didn't know what to expect, right? Because it's a, it's a geographically speaking, pretty tiny place. And, um, but it's vibrant and got all this history. And um, I just had such a welcoming feel from, from people there. Um, maybe talk about sort of what Malta is, is known for. What's sort of the cultural identifiers um, for for people living there in Malta? Well, Malta is a very peculiar case study, so to speak, <laughs> because we are in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. So there is a lot of Arabic influence, even our language, our native language, Maltese, is a Semitic language, but it's the only one written in Roman characters. And that is actually what has, what is our in, in our mesh, so to speak, because it's exactly... Mm -hmm how we live. We are Mediterranean. We are just between the Arabic and the European uh, continent, so to speak. And we have been an English colony for over, two, for almost 200 years. So that's why I'm saying we're very peculiar because we're Mediterranean, but very British. So that makes us quite unique. Yeah, well, in the... Um... You know, even the, the food, the fusion of foods and cultures in into the restaurants when I was there, um, it was great. I really enjoyed it, but it was also unique. So I anyway, I, I always love to when I first arrive someplace. Like to wander and just sort of see where I end up, you know, don't take a car from the hotel to the convention center or any of that, but actually you know, talk to people and get to know a place. And um, I was sad I only had five days. It's not nearly enough, especially when you're trying to get over jet lag. But um, it was it was a great experience there. So I'm excited about the fact that the cannabis market is um, continuing to expand and that you're providing all these opportunities for the industry, of course, but selfishly also because it means I get to go back on a <laughs> regular basis. So, um, you know, with the geography of um, the location of the country, uh, what I want to take our crystal balls out a little bit and sort of speculate about the future because um, being just north of Africa and having these sort of operationally beneficial um, things happening within Malta for the industry. What what do you see the connectivity point being from a continent like Africa, which, you know, there is a lot of activity going on in sub-Saharan Africa in particular. Um, you know, how are, how are you all looking at, at the development of that market? Malta historically has always had very important and strong ties with North Africa, obviously because of our geographical proximity. And that means that business has always look at Malta as a hub from where to expand to the North African and also to the Middle East. Uh, um, uh, obviously, if you look a bit towards the East, you have very important um, jurisdictions there as well. So Malta has always played this role uh, as a hub between Europe and uh, North Africa. And as North Africa will start um, legislating and regulating the, the cannabis industry, and Malta's importance um, in this sector will continue to grow, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I I spent, uh, I guess, third quarter of last year um, doing a lot of research into the, the expanding opportunities in Africa for the Global Cannabis Network Collective. And I think we're still a few years out from having, you know, a substantive flow of opportunity there, but um, for those watching and listening here, I, I think it's definitely a region of the world that people need to keep their eye on, right? Especially with all of the historic sort of commercial pathways between those two continents. Um, let's talk a little bit about the tax benefits because I know when I've talked to consultants in Malta about some of the, um, benefits that they are pitching companies who might uh, do business there. You know, the tax benefits always come up as one of those things that people should be aware of. 
what is what is the difference um, there for companies operating versus, say, if they were in Germany or France? Well, uh, I have to be honest and blunt. I'm no tax expert, but I do know how the tax in Malta works. So basically, yeah. in Malta, uh, any company uh, has to pay 35% tax on profits. However, for non-resident shareholders, uh, there is the possibility to re-ask for a reimbursement of up to six sevenths of the tax paid in Malta. So the way it works out is that for any foreign-owned company, um, the tax paid in Malta is around five percent. Um, it's all uh, about board, so this is not tax avoidance or in any way. Um, uh, it is uh, the tax regimen that we have utilized uh, here in Malta so far. Well, that's a great incentive for people. So, um, and in, yes, we'll do our disclaimer. Neither one of us is a tax expert. So <laughs> please talk to your local tax experts if you're going to do this and make sure you do everything correctly. Um, but it is clearly um, beneficial when you look at when you look at situations like we have here where I'm based in the United States um, and you've got cannabis companies being taxed um, at ridiculous rates because of the legal structure here. Um, it's refreshing for people to hear that, you know, as long as you adhere to the rules and follow it, that you can um, find great opportunities and have a government that will, in many ways, um, help to incentivize your success. So talk to me um, again about what you all have planned in the coming year. Um, you know, 2020 was what it was. We made it through. <laughs> and I think we um, are now looking at 2021 going, well, hopefully by the time I'm talking in 2022, we go, well, that turned out great one way or the other. Um, but you know, what, what are the plans this year for Malta Enterprise in continuing the cannabis conversation? Sure. So obviously, cannabis is a very fast evolving industry. Um, I think we have all realized that and we have seen it changing from the moment that tool started. And obviously, it's a matter of adapting and retaining competitive advantage. Um, uh, this means that even our outlook on certain aspects of the cannabis industry have changed. Um, for instance, initially, we were looking at companies that have a proven track record in the sector in order to make sure and reassure ourselves that we were doing things right from their inception. Um, uh, today, we realize that if you want innovation and research, um, you have to open to startups. Uh, you have to open to younger companies, to companies that have new ideas. And also these companies would need a specific form of capital support, so to speak. Um, so that is one way how we are addressing adding more layers to our medical cannabis ecosystem through introducing more innovation and research through the introduction of startups. We're also looking, obviously, at other important aspects of cannabis, um, such as the CBD sector, which is a sector which is quite patchy when it comes and fragmented when it comes to legislation, even all over the EU. We are looking attentively at it uh, very closely, and we are exploring ways how to regulate it um, in a way that will be a robust way of regulating, so not a, a regulation which will be enacted for a year or so and then having to revise everything. Um, we're also looking, for instance, into the veterinary use of medical cannabis and not just human. So, yes, we are looking at other niches, which we are hoping to regulate in uh, the very near future. And we're keeping a very close watch on what is happening on the international landscape. Yeah, you and me both. I, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, every day that's what I'm doing is trying to get a feel for the international landscape. We hadn't talked before about um, your exploration of the red veterinary aspect of cannabis use. Uh, I have, years ago, I, I came out of the advertising industry. I worked in ad agencies for a long time and I had several sort of pet related accounts that I worked on and it also it always shocked me 
the amount of money that goes into people and their pets and animals, right? And the, um, the incremental revenue that companies could make by paying attention not only to um, the human population, but the, the animal population and how close the relationship is, especially with people and their pets. So it's certainly been a lucrative space already um, in markets like the US and Canada. Um, I have not admittedly looked at it in Europe yet, but uh, I would speculate that it will be a great, a great opportunity there as well. Definitely. So um, as, we, as we look forward to the new year, um, I would be remiss in not mentioning that um, I have heard from some of our friends in Malta that it is likely that MedCan World Forum will happen again at uh, the fourth quarter of this year. Um, worst case scenario, first quarter of uh, 2022. So it does look like there will be some in-person opportunities for people um, not too long. There's others uh, out there as well. I just have a closer tie to that one since I got to go. Um, but. I'm always happy to to be able to encourage people to look at attending those kind of things and and going on and seeing, for example, the archived YouTube videos of past speakers there, um, because you can get a really good understanding of what the the movements are. And Marion, if people have questions about working with Malta Enterprise or um, you know trying to find more information about the cannabis opportunity there, where should they look? Well, they can contact me directly. Um, I can give you my email address right now. If you, that sure, is let's do it. So yeah. it's Marion, M-A-R-I-O-N dot Zamit, Z-A-M-I-T at modernenterprise.com. I'll be very happy to speak to anyone who wants to invest in the industry or expand their activities. And it's just a matter of organizing a Teams or a Zoom call nowadays. So that's very easy to do. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll make sure um, to let everybody know they can always reach out to um, myself or my regular co-host, Jill Reddish. Um, either one of us can always connect uh, viewers and listeners to any of our guests as well. So I want to thank you, Marion, for joining us today. And thanks to all of you out there in Internet land for um, following the International Cannabis Conversation. Don't forget to subscribe. It certainly helps to uh, give me a little ego boost, but also ensures that you all get a chance to get every single episode. So thanks again, Marion. Thanks again to everybody listening and watching. And uh, we'll be back with you again soon on the International Cannabis Conversation.